That's right. Guys, sorry, it took me a while because I just got out of my coma. I was actually in a coma for about like 40 minutes. Hearing David Wood speak for two hours and ranting and ranting and ranting, where the only thing Anthony did was smile and breathe. I was comatose and I just got out of my coma. And in my coma, <clears throat> I had this vision in my comatose state. I was walking in a garden and I saw some beautiful flowers and there were like some beautiful roses. And there was this like gorgeous, beautiful, luscious tree. And there was all these different fruits in my coma, this vision I had. And as I went to reach this very luminescent being with a beauty that I've never seen on earth told me, it's not your time. You need to go back. And when I looked at him, I said, please, no, I can't go back. I can't go back and listen to that man anymore. I can't. This torture, is that hell, how hell is going to be like? Where you're going to hear his voice ringing in your ears. Please, I don't want to go back. Please, please, I don't want to go back. Please, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. But he assured me, he assured me. He told me, when you awake from your coma, the voice won't be there. You'll come back to a state of peace. You won't hear that voice anymore. Talking and ranting and talking and ranting and not shutting up. I said, I made him swear. I made the being swear. I said, swear to me, swear to me that when I wake up from my coma, I will not hear the voice of David Wood. And he and he swore. So I woke up. Whew. Man, I'm telling you. Dude, I hope Hater Wood's listening to this. Have you ever seen a man who invites someone to his live stream? And he talks for 99% of the time. Have you seen that happen? He's the only one who does. And you know it's killer? Someone put a message. He goes, hey, Anthony, great to see you. And I said, yeah, that's all you can do is see him because you're not going to hear from him. As long as David Wood is in the live stream, all you're going to do is see Anthony. You ain't going to hear from him. <laughs> Swear to me. Swear to me. Swear to me. I won't hear that voice again. All right. All right. Woo. Oh, I need to recover. Are we all right? Are we all good? Everyone okay? Everyone back from their coma? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm live streaming later than usual. It's, what, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The people in Europe are all asleep. Neighbor boys, you know it's a sin to lie, right? Neighbor boys, not a bit boring. They were so boring that they made the Quran sound exciting. I would rather hear the Quran recited than hear David would speak for two hours ever again. I'd rather have you recite the Quran in my ears than hear him speak for two hours. Okay. Hey, Radical Love, was you, remember? Radical Love, didn't you say in the comment section, hey, Anthony, it's great to see you. And I said, yeah, that's all you're going to do is you're going to see him. You ain't going to hear him. El Andrew, I love you, man. You're back anyway. Poor Andrew, I was taking shots at him. But you know what? He came anyway. He was telling me, hey, what about 1 Peter 3.15, Sam? You know you need to be gentle. And you're not gentle. You're a jerk. Yeah, and I'm going to come to your live stream, and you ain't going to block me, jerk. Okay, anyway, folks, honestly, I got to get me something to drink. Andrew, I'll, I'll answer that question. I'll do a Q&A, live Q&A, and we'll talk about First Peter 3.15. <clears throat> we'll talk about it. Right now, I want to finish Hebrews 1 that I didn't finish. 
couple of days ago. I will do it. But honestly, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be very honest with you. I'm very drained right now. I am so drained. I swear I'm not lying. I swear I'm not lying. I swear. You guys think I'm lying. These are not tears of laughter. These are tears of pain. I'm, I'm, I'm suffering from having to hear him for two hours that I am crying so hard that I'm laughing because I'm losing my mind. You're always on my mind. You're always on my mind. I got to get a drink. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me open this up. Can you guys hear me? Can you still hear me? The reason why I have my earplugs. Yeah, he wants to talk about how do you deal with 1 Peter 3.15 if you can mock and insult people. God willing, I'll talk about that. Now, Andrew, just by way of confession, that doesn't mean I'm justified every time I insult someone. I know my imperfections. I know my weaknesses, and I, and I need prayer, and I'm saying this. <clears throat> and I, I know it's going to be used against me. Yeah. Pray for me. I don't want to use those passages of Scripture where there is a time and place to insult someone, belittle someone, ridicule someone, <clears throat> embarrass someone for their persistent blasphemies and mockery of the faith, and justify my losing my patience because that too is sin, and the Lord is not honored. So pray that God will give me the power to exercise perfect constraint, to try to be more patient and loving <clears throat> and less harsh. Because I think I've already demonstrated the fact I'm not afraid of retaliation or someone attacking me. I'm willing to insult someone if he mocks the Lord. But there is a time and place. The problem is, is that you have Christians that have gone to the extreme opposite. Let me explain what I mean. You have Christians who think it's never appropriate to insult someone, mock someone, ridicule someone, and put someone in his place if they're mocking Jesus Christ. So they've gone to the extreme opposite, right? So what we need to do, myself, everyone, to find the perfect biblical balance by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of Jesus Christ, for the glory of Jesus Christ, the balance to be gracious, loving, and patient, and gentle, but knowing by the power of the Holy Spirit when it's time to put someone in his place or a place, to insult them, ridicule them, make them look like the fools they are for blaspheming Jesus Christ. But let's be honest. But can we all be honest here? Can we all be honest? In the West, the tendency is to go to the extreme opposite of being bold. Because they think you always have to be gentle and nice, you know, cordial, you know, congeal. And it's never appropriate to put someone in his place. Yeah. That's the problem in the West, right? We need the balance. So those of you who are always kind, always cordial, congeal and, and nice, you need to be a little more bold, a little more harsh. And not be afraid to insult someone, ridicule someone who's mocking Jesus, blaspheming Jesus, <clears throat> attacking the Bible, or attacking the brethren. Whereas someone like me with a Middle Eastern temperament, someone like me, even my brother Christian Prince, both of us, Usama Dakdo, we need to learn to be a little more gentle, a little more loving and patient. So we are the opposite extreme to you guys. So we pray for each other. Let's pray in Jesus' name for each other to balance each other out and find the perfect balance so that we're not unnecessarily offensive and cause people to stumble without justification so we don't shame the name of Jesus Christ. Honestly, right? Anyway, guys, let me get something to drink because I'll be honest. I, I love David. You know that. He's my brother in Christ, and I'm going to have to carry him till I die. And that's predestined, so he's proof of Calvinism because I'm predestined to carry him. But dude, did he torture me. David, stop the yapping, man. Stop the yapping. Please swear to me when I get up from my coma. I won't hear that voice again. Swear to me. All right, I'll be right back. Hold on. Let me get something. Uh, let me get me uh, something to drink and we'll begin by the grace of God. Pray. Guys, it's very late because one thing I don't like to do, I don't like to live stream. When other brothers and sisters are live streaming. So if my sister Hatun is live streaming, I don't like to live stream. Because it's not about competing with each other. It's about serving each other and loving each other for the glory of Jesus Christ. 
and wanting to see the other to prosper and be used mightily by the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ. So if Hatun is on, I don't like to be on. If al Fadi is on, I don't like to be on. So I don't want to compete, right? Because I want all of us <clears throat> to support all of these amazing brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Hatun, she's a warrior. She's a warrior for, for Jesus Christ. She puts men to shame. al Fadi, he's a warrior because he knows he's showing his face publicly. And he knows being a former Salafi Muslim from Saudi Arabia, he's putting his life on the line. Okay, he's putting his life on the line. So he's a warrior. God bless you. Thank you for the super chats. Okay, he is a warrior. In fact, he was even threatened by a family member. A family member had threatened him years ago that if he finds him, he'll kill him. I know this firsthand. That he said if he finds him, he'll kill him. So he's a warrior who loves Jesus. The fact that he puts his face out there, he's a warrior. So you, you need to love these brothers and sisters. Honestly, he did. I'm not lying. He, he said, if I find you, I'll kill you. A family member. If I find you, I will kill you. So guys, love, pray, support, and even fast for our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. For Hatun, she's a warrior. She puts men to shame. I love that sister. Al-Fadi, a warrior. Jay Smith, I don't say this enough. Jay Smith. He's a warrior. Love him. Pray for him. Support him. <clears throat> cry out to the Lord Jesus to preserve his life for many more years so we can benefit from him, from <clears throat> Al-Fadi, from Hatun, from Usama Dakdok. You don't hear enough about Usama Dakdok, another warrior who's in love with Jesus and is willing to die for Jesus. And he puts his, himself in the public limelight. He shows his face. And he's not afraid of Osama Dak Dok. U S A M A. Osama Dak Dok. D A K D O K. He has a website and he has a YouTube channel. Osama Dak Dok. The man is on fire. He's a warrior. He loves Jesus. And you know about Christian Prince. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. When it comes to Islam, Christian Prince is a warrior. <clears throat> he's a lion, Christian Prince. And don't forget the other brothers as well and sisters as well. Rashid, a lion for Jesus. Abuna Zakaria, Father Zechariah, a lion for Jesus. These are great men and women. And I'm saying this from my heart. From my heart, I say this. From my heart. These are great men and women who love Jesus and love Muslims enough to put their lives on the line and are willing to be killed to glorify Jesus and get Muslims saved. Honestly, I mean that. I'm not saying it. <clears throat> Ridwan, can you remind me of Ridwan? I'm, I may know him, but I don't know. Ridwan. So we got more. Guys, if I don't mention people, don't think it's because I don't care for them. Yeah, now, but apostate prophet, pray for him to come to Jesus Christ. He's doing good, great work destroying Islam, but here's the problem, folks. Abdullah Samir, great work destroying Islam, but here's the problem. <clears throat> here's the problem. It's not so much about destroying Islam. Because, folks, how many of you here are Christians who love Jesus Christ? How many of you are Trinitarians who love the triune God? Because I don't know. Some people come here, they're not Christians. Some people come here, and they're not Christians. You're welcome. Look, even unbelievers are welcome to my channel, provided you can respect me, respect my brothers and sisters in Christ, respect the rules. You can ask any question, if it's a sincere question, no matter how tough, and I will serve you, and I will answer your question by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. I don't mind unbelievers. What I do mind is people coming here to attack, mock, ridicule, blaspheme. Okay. If you guys are Christians, then you should not be happy. You should not be content that Muslims are leaving Islam. You should not be happy and content that your brother in humanity, Ridwan, has left Islam, but he's an atheist because if Jesus is alive, <clears throat> and he is, Christ is alive, <clears throat> God is real, God exists. And if this man does not come to know Jesus, then his faith in the afterlife will be no better than a Muslim. Right? Here, like this young man here who left Islam, who's an atheist. <clears throat> Though he left Islam, good for him, he's still lost without Jesus Christ. 
So don't be content with them becoming atheists or agnostic because then you're being selfish. Let me tell you why you're being selfish. Because that means you're more concerned, you're more concerned, you're more concerned about your earthly safety, right? <clears throat> your earthly, worldly security than you are about the everlasting destinies of these people. Because to you, you're more concerned that there are no Muslims so you can leave, live peaceably, comfortably on earth because a Muslim threatens your security and peace on earth. But that's being very selfish. I am not an atheist. I am not an agnostic. I am not content and satisfied with a Muslim becoming an atheist. I'm not. I'm not content and satisfied. Because you know why? I have no doubt. I have no doubt Jesus is alive. I have no doubt <clears throat> Jesus is real. <clears throat> I have no doubt Jesus is risen. He is the Lord of glory. The Bible is God's word, and the God of the Bible is real. And I have no doubt that death is not the end of us. Death is a door that we enter either to spread and spend all, all <clears throat> our years, our never-ending years in the presence of Jesus, being flooded in his infinite love and compassion, or being cut off from the presence of Christ forever and ever. I am not content with Ridwan being an atheist. And if you listen to his most recent session, I just heard it. He is not happy with his life. Even in what he said, he says he struggles with anxiety and depression, emptiness, because he sees his life is empty and has no meaning. Did you guys watch his recent video? I was listening to bits and pieces and I picked up on that because a heart created by God will never be at rest and will never be satisfied until it rests in its creator. Are you with me there? A heart that's been created by God. If God is real and he is, he created your heart. He created your heart to only be content and satisfied and at peace when it rests in its creator, when it discovers its creator, when it falls in love with its creator. And that is the truth. I'm not just trying to preach. I'm being honest. So shame on you, Christians. And I say this in love. Let me shame you. Shame on you, Christians, that go to these channels like Abdul, Abdullah Samir or Ridwan. And just encourage them to attack Islam, but do nothing to try to show them that Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. He is risen. He has destroyed the power of sin, Satan, and death. And you need Jesus, my brother in humanity, my sister in humanity. Jesus is not mythical. He's real. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Because some of you were at Abdullah Samir's live stream. When he invited a former Christian who now became an atheist and denies that Jesus existed. And you were there adding to the numbers of views, commenting in the comment section. Someone who's no longer a Christian, whom he invited to bash Christianity and show Jesus didn't exist. You know who you are because I saw you there. And once I saw that she was attacking Christianity, I left. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, I've heard it. Right? You with me there? Do you think the Lord Jesus is happy with you, my brothers and sisters? Do you think the Lord Jesus is happy with you, my brothers and sisters? That you know Jesus is alive and God is real. Unless you're fake. Maybe you're a fake too. A wolf in sheep's clothing pretending to be a Christian. I don't know. Only God knows your heart. But do you think the Lord is happy with you to go to a channel where they're bashing the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you sit there like sheep. Do you think? Is your hatred for Islam such that it, it drowns your love for Jesus and your zeal for Jesus, for his glory, honor, and praise? Is that what it is? Do you hate Islam so much that you're willing to join hands with people who not only hate Islam, but hate your Jesus and your Bible just as much. He had a, sh a talk about a week ago. What? No, about two weeks ago. Maybe I think it was even three. 
a, a young lady who was raised in a Christian home bashing Christianity. Exactly, Zena. And that's why, Zena, you're a warrior too. My sister's a warrior. She can dish it out and take it because she's let me have it. Have it. And then because I'm an oversized baby, I've blocked her. And then I've unblocked her because she's a warrior. That's how it is. So, folks, let me repeat it again so we can begin. Begin prayer, begin the session. Okay. Let me repeat it again and <clears throat> begin the session. Is your hatred for Muhammad greater than your love for Jesus? Is your hatred for Islam drowning your love and zeal and passion for Jesus? And you know how you're going to know the answer to that? Anytime you go to these channels where they invite people to bash Christianity and discredit Jesus, you hate Islam more than you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Honestly. And then what are you showing the Muslims? The Muslims are wondering, at least we have this in common. We believe God exists and the God of Abraham exists. And whether you like it or not, even if you believe Isa is a satanic counterfeit, at least we acknowledge Isa is Messiah, virgin born, his mother is the greatest woman. But those atheists will bash your Jesus and insult your mother. Do you think the atheists believe that Mary was a virgin when she conceived and gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ? By the way, uh, Acts 17, I just listened. I try to listen to your two-hour rant. Can you give other people a chance to speak, David? 99% of the time, you kept yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping. And poor David, Anthony was just smiling. All right? In fact, you tortured me so badly, I fell into a comatose state and I had a vision. And I made that angel swear to me that if he's going to send me back, that if he sends me back, that I will not hear your voice ever again. And he promised, because I didn't want to come back after hearing you. The greatest torture would be to listen to your voice forever and ever. Okay? Okay. So, guys, just to keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, right? Keep that in mind. And you know what's ironic? Can I just say this as a side note? Here's what's ironic. We will go to a channel where there is an, a Muslim who's an atheist that will invite a Christian who's not an atheist and sit in that channel, right? Yet, we will have a problem. And these are this is what makes me laugh. Yet Christians will have a problem. Let's say if you're a Protestant, for someone who's not Orthodox to go to an Orthodox channel or someone who's not Catholic to go to a Catholic channel and or even be invited to speak, but they'll say, Sam... Or, David, you're compromising. You know better than to go. Wait, 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 wait. So for a Christian to go to an Orthodox channel or a Protestant channel or a Catholic channel who are all Trinitarians, who love the triune God, who love Jesus as the God-man, who honor his mother as the greatest woman, who conceived and gave birth to him as a virgin, who believe the Bible is inspired and fell born again. You'll have a problem doing that. But you won't have a problem. You won't have a problem if that Christian is invited to Abdul Samir's channel to talk about Islam. That same Abdul Samir will end up bashing Christianity, the Bible, and Jesus and his blessed mother. <whistles> Tell me I'm lying here. Tell me I'm lying. Am I lying? Folks, I'm consistent, and I've said it. I'm consistent. I've said it. And what have I said? Hopefully the buffering up. If you're a Trinitarian Christian, if you worship and love... Hold on, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Yada. Sorry, guys, it's buffering. In Jesus' name, bless the connection, Lord Jesus, for your glory. Bless the connection in Jesus' name. Please, Lord, save us from buffering. Ah, the buffering. Okay. Hey, I'm consistent. I've said, if you're a Trinitarian, pay attention, and you worship the triune God, and you love the triune God, and you believe the Bible's inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God, and you believe that the Lord Jesus died and rose again physically and bodily, and ascended into heaven physically and bodily, and will return physically and bodily to judge the living and the dead, and you believe that his blessed mother gave birth to him while she was a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are my brother and sister in Christ, and I will come and serve you. I'll come to your church and serve you. I'll come to your channel and serve you. And here's the proof. I was with Jay Dyer yesterday. 
And about a week ago, I was in Reason and Theology channel, a Catholic channel. I will serve you. I will love you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray I mean this, I'll even give my life for you if you're a Trinitarian and you worship and love my God, the triune God. And I don't care if you are Catholic or Orthodox or Protestant. You want me there? Right? At least I'm consistent in that area. I'm consistent in that area. Right? I am consistent in that area. And here's the proof. Yesterday I was on Jay Dyer's channel. We talked about messianic prophecy. Okay, that's yesterday. The week before I was with William Albrecht. Was it a week before or two weeks ago? Where we're talking about the Trinity and the church fathers. Reason and theology, Catholics. All right? So let me repeat again. You are a Trinitarian and you love the triune God and you worship Jesus God, man. I'm your brother and your servant. You can ask me to come and talk about the Trinity or how to refute anti-Trinitarian cults. And I will be there without hesitation to serve you for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Well, that's it. Let me get something to drink so we can begin. It's kind of late. I know it's about after 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I usually try to go 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But people are doing live streams. Okay, now, let me get something to drink. As I get something to drink, we'll begin, we'll begin in prayer and finish. Hopefully, we won't be distracted. In Jesus' name, pray for me and pray for the connection because Satan tried to attack me again, but he used the Muslim to attack me today. And then David's voice didn't help me. David's voice tortured me. I almost passed out. In fact, I did. I'm sorry. I forgot. I was in a coma, and the angel sent me back, and I was fighting with the angel. I said, no, 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 don't send me back. If David is in this world, I don't want to go back. <laughs> All right, anyway. Guys, you got to admit, man, I should have been an actor, dude. Tell me I wasn't meant for acting. We were sailing along on Moonlight Bay. Let me get something to drink. Hold on, hold on, let me get it. We were sailing along on Moonlight Bay. Sailing along on Moonlight Bay. Hi, and by the way, I can't be too loud because I don't want to be a nuisance to my neighbors. So pray for me. I don't cause them to stumble. All right. Anyway, folks, just let you in on a little project. Two things and we're going to pray and we're going to begin. Little project. I have an official companion, Sahabi, a companion. Okay. He's been commissioned to record with the help of another Sahabi, another companion of mine, all my authentic sayings. sayings and collected in one volume, and it's going to be called Sahi al Shamuni. Sahi al Shamuni. Okay. And the men who are working at it on it is Ariel Gonzalez and to is it wait, is he here? What's his name? I forget his name on, on uh, my YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I'm, seriously. It's going to be Sahi al Shamuni. I'm not lying. Ariel, he's been collecting it already. I forget our brother's name here. Is it? It's not. I don't know. Should I give it away? Ariel Gonzalez. He's been commissioned. He's going to be. Re oh, Jai's here. Okay, Jai. Jai and Ariel, with the help of a guy named Samoe, and Ed is going to then edit it to make sure there's no weak links in the chain of uh, transmission. By the way, Alex, it's not L M A O, dude. It's L-M-B-O. We don't say laugh my aspirations off. We say laugh my buttocks off. Come on now. Keep it G-rated. L-M-B-O. Anyway, it's going to be called Sahi El shamuni He's going to combine only the authentic narrations attributed to Shamun. Which video, Orthodox Defense? I have no idea what you're talking about, brother. Which video? Okay. Now, guys, you want to hear how low Muslims get? You want to hear how Satan pricks his children to start attacking. Okay, now, today I found out there's a troll, a Mohammedan Muslim troll, who tried to steal my identity and called himself Hasamo Skamun and went looking into the docks, because it's called the docket. Docket? Trying to find dirt on my divorce, that my ex-wife divorced me, and tried to dig out dirt that he thought was going to embarrass me. 
Yep. And so he came on my uh, my Facebook trying to throw stuff at me as if that's going to scare me. And I said, because of that, I'm going to punish your prophet and I'm going to insult your prophet and I'm going to attack your prophet like never before. The more you do this, the more we're going to go after your prophet and make sure we desecrate that filthy son of Satan to people see what kind of wicked, vile, filthy demon he is for the glory of Jesus Christ. Bini, what's up, buddy? Yep, exactly, Melanie Cambello. He's quoting what my ex-wife's lawyers were saying about me. Gee, guys, um, do you expect your spouse's lawyers to paint a rosy picture of you? Last time I checked, when two people are in divorce court and they both have lawyers and it doesn't end well, the lawyers of each will try to make the other person look as evil as possible. Hmm. But anyway, with that said, Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, we love you. Father, we trust in you and we depend on you. Lord Jesus, we trust in you and we depend on you. Holy Spirit, we trust in you and depend on you. Wash us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, every one of us. Fill us with the, with the Holy Spirit, Father. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill us with your presence and take over this session, Holy Spirit. Anoint my words to speak powerfully and clearly and lovingly and passionately. And Holy Spirit, please save me from error, from misinterpretation, from confusion, from impatience. And bless them, Holy Spirit, as only you can. Illuminate them to see the depth of Scripture and give them wisdom and knowledge to understand the depths of Scripture. And then give us the power, Holy Spirit, to live your word perfectly, to proclaim your word, to love your word, and even die for your word, the Holy Bible, that reveals Jesus Christ to us. And make us more like Jesus, the God-man, who was perfect in his humanity, the perfect human worshiper of the Father, to emulate the Lord Jesus and the way he lived on earth, and the way he worshiped the Father, and the way he served to be like Jesus by your power, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus, and sanctify our motives, and save us from our flesh, from our sinful passions. Holy Spirit, please save us, and perfect us to be warriors and lions, lionesses in the battlefield for the glory of Jesus Christ, and provide for our needs, and Holy Spirit, sanctify me never to prostitute myself for money or fame, Please, Holy Spirit, and thank you for the provisions that you've given me for my daughters. Bless my daughters. Bless my brothers and sisters here. Bless their loved ones as only you can, and help us to become more like Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, take over the session, and help me to be a blessing to my neighbors, to be light to them so they see Jesus in me, and I'll cause them to stumble. Help us to be light to our unbelieving neighbors, not to cause them to stumble and doubt the name of Jesus Christ. Please, Holy Spirit, please, we need you. You are the gift of the Father and Son to us. A gift that's infinite in value. A gift that is beyond comprehension. Comprehension, And we, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank the Father and the Son for you. A gift given to us to indwell us, to sanctify us, to perfect us, to teach us, to love us, to correct us, to discipline us, and build us up until we become spiritually mature men and women reflecting the glory of jesus thank you holy spirit we love you and we need you in jesus name we pray and anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants in jesus name amen, amen, amen. all right are we ready guys like i said it's later than usual but we still got pretty good 175 for me that's pretty good boring wood had about 900 in the most boring, pathetic session I've ever heard in my life. If he can get 900. But anyway, we're up to at least 270. Hopefully that number increases for the glory of Christ. Are we ready? I think I'm going to have to put my earplugs because my neighbor, pray for my neighbors that I can be Jesus to them. My neighbor over here, pray that he gets saved. He likes to blast the music so loud you can hear it across the street. And I can't handle noise. One thing about me, guys. And this is just by way of testimony. I'm sharing this with you guys. You may think I'm lying. I went and had myself checked out. And I have the symptoms of PT, PTSD. PTSD. Post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. I actually went and checked myself out. They go, you have the symptoms. And I'm not trying to play 
victim and, oh, feel sorry for me. Don't feel sorry for me. You know why? Because Jesus is in love with me. He's in love with you. Jesus is in love with us. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he will make us whole. And he's healing us for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay. The reason why I have PTSD is because I went through 10 years of abuse and noise. When I hear no lo loud noise, I get discombobulated and I get stressed out, right? So let me just get my earplugs because I think he's playing the music. Hold on. <clears throat> let the music play. He won't get away. But tip the music. Guys, you got to admit, I make black look beautiful, right? Good guys wear black. Pray for me to keep losing that weight, right? Let the music play. He won't get away. Okay, you guys remember? Who remembers that song? That song. Lord Jesus, have mercy on you, Luisa and Cambello. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on you too. Uh -huh. Okay, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Just want to make sure. All right. You know, I just want to say this, and I'm not just saying this to tickle your ears, and I'm not just saying this to say it. To be a crowd pleaser, may God sanctify my motives. But I just want to say, I don't think I say it enough, right? I love my Trinitarian brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I love my Protestant brothers and sisters, but I haven't said this enough. Because I was raised in a background where I was very leery and critical of the Catholic tradition and the Orthodox tradition because of my background. But I want to just say from my heart, I truly love, love my Orthodox Christian brothers and sisters, and my Catholic brothers and sisters. And I know a lot of Protestants, especially the Calvinists, are going to be upset. They're going to think I've become wishy-washy. You know, I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth and save me from error. And I'm open to what the Holy Spirit has for me. I am. And I just want to say something. For all my Orthodox and Catholic brothers and sisters, the Protestant brothers and sisters know that I love them because I've been raised among them. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I love you from my heart. I mean that. I may not show you the love I need to show you, and I may get angry, and I may be impatient with you, but I love you guys. I truly do, right? I love you guys, right? I love you guys, and I pray if I have found favor in the sight of the Lord Jesus, if the Lord Jesus is pleased with me, that I pray God will fill me with the Spirit to continue to serve you guys until I die and enter my rest. Right. And I mean that I say it. I love you guys. I really do. In fact, <clears throat> I'll probably if I keep talking about it, I'll probably start crying again. So I got to watch it because, you know, I don't want to say Sam, he's a big sissy he's crying or, you know, he's put on a show. No. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And I'm going to share something with you guys. Yeah, I don't know, man. If I, Yeah, I'm going I'm to get attacked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have fallen passionately. I'm going to just share this with you guys, right? I have fallen in passionate love with the blessed mother of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my holy mother. I know people are saying, Sam, you sound Catholic Orthodox. No, no. I'm being biblical. Every time I think of the mother of our Lord, our blessed mother, it's like I, I want to just cry because, <clears throat> yeah, see. I gotta stop. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna end up bawling. <clears throat> I love her a lot. I really do. <clears throat> because uh, I told you, when I think of her, because <clears throat> she had my God and Savior, the Lord Jesus, in her blessed belly, and the physical body and the human nature of my Lord was created by the triune God from her blessed sanctified womb. And she gave birth to my Lord in the flesh anyway. Let's let's talk about the subject, all right? No, Joseph, obviously, he's a great man. Jesus is adoptive, legal father, great man, right? But there's something special about the mother of our Lord, and I'll tell you why. I told you, when I talk about it, I get teary-eyed. Yeah, she's our mother too. Dusty, you know how you know she's your mother? If Jesus is your brother, then Mary's your mother. 
if Jesus is your brother, then God is your father. That's how it works. That's how it works, man. It's just biblical logic. Think about it. Is Jesus your brother? Then Mary is your mother. Is Jesus your brother? Then God is your father because of Jesus, right? Right? The reason why I, I'm in awe of her is because the Lord, yeah, we're going to begin, guys. I hope when I take these, when I go on these tangents, it's still a blessing to you. The, uh, the reason why when I think of her, I can't help but just love her is because Jesus, my Lord, guys, if you believe in the Bible, this is what you believe. Jesus, my Lord, existed before he became man because he's the eternal word. He's the eternal logos. He's the eternal son. He's been with the Father and the Spirit in eternity. And according to the Bible, if you believe in the Bible, right? Uh, Jesus is mighty God. If you think I'm confusing Muslims because of this, then either you're an ignoramus or you care more about Muslims than you do about the truth of the gospel. When you say son of God, that confuses Muslims. So Jesus is mighty God. Stop calling Jesus the son of God because Muslims get confused. So you worship Muslims and you serve Muslims or is your priority to be faithful to God and his word? What, what do you want to do? Jesus is mighty God. And it's a shame you even had the name Jesus is mighty God. You know why it's a shame Jesus is mighty God? Uh, no, she is. Whether you like it or not, she is. If she's a mother of Christ, then she's your mother. If Jesus is your brother, then she's your mother. Okay, let me now school you. And I think I'm going to have to send you on your merry way too. Another agent of the devil. Yeah, I'm confused. Okay, here, why don't you call me? Call me. Call me on Skype and then educate me and put me in my place. Can you do that, please? Would you do that for me? Please educate me. Please put me in my place. Cabello. See, here we go. The Protestants who think they understand another tradition that they critique. Yeah. No, you are actually the dog of the devil, and it's a shame you have the name Jesus is mighty God. You know why, guys, this, this demon, it, it's ironic he has this name, Jesus is mighty God? Because the passage mighty God is from Isaiah 9, 6, where it says, unto us a child is born. Now, uh, demon, you who think you're a Christian, the child who's born, who's going to be the mighty God, he's born from whom? Isaiah 9, verse 6. Wait, wait, let me deal with this guy. The child who was born, the mighty God of Isaiah 9, verse 6. He was born from whom? To be a child? He is, Alex. I'm going to send him on his merry way. He, he was born from whom? Because Isaiah 9, 6, where Jesus called the mighty God, it says, For unto us a child was born, yeled yuled, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, <clears throat> the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So he was born from whom? Uh, Umberto, yes, I will say he was a Christian who's not on the authority of Scripture. If you go against Scripture, then you are a dog too. You don't like it, Umberto? Bye, bye, oh, bye, 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 bye. These guys, they think they hurt me, man. Yes, she is. Sid, you guys really, do I need to show you from the scripture that she is Theot uh, Theotokos? Theotokos? Do I need to show you that from scripture? You honestly, sin sincerely don't realize that she is Theotokos? She's the God bearer. She bore God in, in his human flesh. Seriously? I need to change the subject and talk about it? I don't mind. If you really want to learn what the Bible teaches, I'll show you. Uh, Theotokos, Mike A.D., means the God-bearer, that Mary bore God in the flesh. That God in her womb, God in her womb, right, <clears throat> became flesh from her womb because that child is God. Oh, this guy is a modalist demon, son of Satan, heretic. This guy, Jesus Mighty God, is not even a Trinitarian. Can you call me so you can debate whether we hold a quadrinity? Anyway, send him on his merry way because this guy's a joke. He won't call. No, Umberto, it's your disgusting attitude because you're a wicked, vile dog and hypocrite because you just attacked me for being nasty and you're being nasty and attacking me. You wicked, foaming dog. You don't like it? And there's nothing you can do about it, Umberto. That's what's beautiful. You can't do anything about it. You can only be brave behind the screen. 
المسيح أكبر المسيح أكبر That's all you can do. You can only be tough on a screen, dude. المسيح Okay, guys, do you want me to show you the biblical basis for the title Theotokos? Do you want me to show you the biblical basis for the title Theotokos? You guys want me to do that? Okay. So we're going to have a long night tonight. Who's not going to sleep tonight? Who's ready not to sleep tonight? Because we're going to have a long session. You sure? You can hang? It's Friday. There's no work. Okay. Let me now show you. Okay, let me now show you the biblical basis for the title Theotokos. Theotokos. Theotokos literally means the God-bearer. The God-bearer. The woman who bore God in the flesh. Okay. Are you ready now? All right, who's ready now? Who's going to now pay attention and not be a distraction so I can give it to you? Okay. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Let's read verses 6 to 7. Are we ready? Let's do it. Let's do it, folks. Uh, Reno, who told you she's not a creation of God? Are you really sick and challenged to think that when you say she's the mother of God, that means she's eternal? Are you, Honestly, guys, seriously, what an embarrassment. What an embarrassment, the level of ignorance, stupidity, and illiteracy. Who says that calling her the mother of God the mother of God somehow implies she's not a creature. Do you understand? By the way, does anyone understand what it means when they say that she's the mother of God, which is a, a, a tradition that goes way back in church history? It's ancient. Okay. Do you understand what that means or no? Who doesn't understand? Put it, say, I don't understand or put it to. Just say, I don't understand or put it to. So I can explain it because I'm shocked that people don't get it. Who doesn't get this? Okay, Sid. Okay, okay. When they say Mary's the mother of God, Sid and Marco, listen to me. Okay, Mike, listen. Guys, I want to serve you guys. Mother of God means that the child in her womb that she carried was God. That's why she's called the mother of God. It means the child in her womb was God who was taking human nature and flesh from her body. It doesn't mean she gave to Jesus his divine nature or that she's older than God. Everyone with me there? Exactly, Beanie. Let me, I'll get there, Beanie. Just be patient with me. Now, for those of you who didn't know what it means, do you understand what it means when they say Mary is the mother of God? Okay, let me explain it. It means that the human child, that human baby that was forming in her womb, was God who entered her womb to take on a human nature and a physical body from her womb. It does not mean that she produced the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It does not mean that she gave to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit their divine nature. That's not what it means. It means that human child is more than a human. That human baby, that human developing in her womb, wasn't merely human. He was God becoming human in her womb. Everyone understand that? I'm going to take some time to unpack this. We're probably going to have to change the title. Okay. For those of you who didn't know what it means, do you understand what it means now? you understand what it means now? Okay. Mike and uh, Marco, for the, when you put those who said two, do you believe that when Mary conceived the physical body, human nature of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit while she was a virgin, do you believe Jesus was still God while he was in her womb? Or did he cease to be God? Did he stop being God? Do you believe he was still God in the womb? Okay, Marco, you just answered your question. That's all the mother of God title means. The mother of God title means that human baby in her womb was more than human. He was God in the flesh taking human nature from her womb. Now, can you explain to me what's wrong with that title? What's wrong with that title? Can someone tell me what's wrong with the, that title? Sid? Marco, Mike, is there anything wrong with that title? Anything wrong with it? It's deceitful. Wow. 
Well, how do you answer this? It's deceitful. Okay. Okay. Oh, boy. There's some people you can't cure stupidity, right? Like uh, Stephen Austin said, you're a special kind of stupid. You're a special kind of stupid. Anything can be taken in the wrong way, Alex. Hold on. Alex. Alex. Let's go with it. Son of God. Son of God. Muslims tell me, how can Jesus be son of God without God having a wife, getting her pregnant to give birth to his son? So if he's the son of God, God is his father, who's his mother? Any title you use can be deceitful. Jesus bowed in heaven. What in the world are you talking about? I don't get a Catholic defender. I have no idea. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Alex, so are you going to stop calling Jesus the son of God? Because Muslims say, if Jesus is God's son, then who is his mother? Does God have a wife that he got her pregnant to give birth to Jesus? Let me, let me play with the minds of these kids who think that they're being intelligent and biblical. Alex, help me understand your logic. So why do you call Jesus son of God? And Alex, let me ask you another question. Is Jesus eternal? Is Jesus eternal? Is he uncreated or was he created? Exactly. He said, I'll, I'll give you the biblical basis in a minute. But Alex, I hope he answers before the rapture so we don't leave him behind. Can he answer the question, brother, so I can help you? Okay. Yeah, she's not worshipped. We'll get to that. Okay. Alex, before the rapture, so we don't leave, leave you behind. Is Jesus eternal? Okay, but Alex, is Jesus eternal? See, there goes the music right there, my neighbor, to distract me. Okay, but wait, Alex, you're lying to me. Because how can a son be eternal? Do you believe he's the son of God? Do you believe he's the son of God? Alex? Yeah, I'm going to get myself in trouble, man. Do you believe he's the son of God, Alex? You're not answering my question. Do you believe he's the son of God? No, you're lying to me, Alex. See, guys, Alex lied to me. He just said Jesus is eternal, but he said Jesus is son of God. How can a son be eternal? The father is always older than the son. See, you lied to me, Alex. You just confused me and you lied to me, Alex. A son cannot be eternal. The father is older than the son. So why did you say Jesus is eternal and you said he's the son of God? You are a liar, Alex. Shame on you, Alex. You confused me. And that's it. I'm going to go to mommy. Mommy. <laughs> mommy. He's a liar. You see how stupid that was? Right? It takes a special kind of stupid to say that just because a title may confuse someone, somehow we shouldn't use it. Right? You understand what I just did, Alex? I just showed you I can play your game and turn what you believe against you. Alex, friend, I'm not trying to confuse you, friend. But you told me it can be misleading. Then the title Son of God can be misleading. The title Son of God can be misleading. So because it can be misleading, should we stop using it? Exactly. Should we stop using it? No, we shouldn't stop using it. Sid, don't ask me a question that's even debated among Orthodox and Catholic, because the Catholics believe in Immaculate Conception. The Orthodox, from my understanding, have a view that Mary was holy and pure, but not so much immaculately conceived because they don't have the Augustinian understanding of original sin. Right? So don't be asking me these questions. These are deep theological questions that I can't answer for you. Right? Okay, now, po follow with me. Follow with me. Follow before you ask me. Uh -huh. Hold on, hold on, guys. We got it because we're, go we're going over. Let's just focus. Logo. Logo. So hold on, hold on. maybe this one's even better. Pins and needles. Needles and pins. It's a happy man that grins. What am I mad about? All right, okay. Now, with that said, focus now. 
Let's come to the biblical basis for the title Theotokos. Theotokos. Okay, number one. J uh, Jason, and you're a self-appointed human being, but we know you're not human. You're not even a dog because dogs are cleaner than you, right? And your mother's the Antichrist because she gave birth to the beast, and that's you. Logo. Okay, now focus with me, guys. Focus with me. Focus, please. If you're asking me whether the title Theotokos, Theotokos appears in the Bible, no. Just like the word Trinity doesn't appear in the Bible. Okay, guys, you want to learn? Focus and follow with me, please, guys. Let's make the most tonight. I haven't been on for a couple of days. Let's let's enjoy this session. Let's get along. Let's pour into the scriptures by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ, trusting the Spirit to save us from error. Focus. Okay. If you're asking me the word Theotokos, is it in the Bible? No, but neither is the Trinity. But who would reject using the term Trinity to describe what the Bible teaches? Would anyone reject to the use of the word Trinity in order to describe what the Bible teaches. Okay. So right off the bat, the word Theotokos is not in the Bible. But what does Theotokos mean? It means that that human child that was conceived in Mary's womb was more than human. He was still God in her womb. So she was conceiving the human flesh, physical body of God. God was in her womb taking flesh. That's all it means. Now, is that biblical? Yes, it is. Now, can I go into the evidence? Can I go into the evidence now? Can I go into the evidence? Can I give you the evidence now? Can we now focus so I can give you the evidence? Zena, are you here? Zena, are you left? You do a hit and run, Zena. Okay. Okay, guys, pay attention now. Let's go to Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. Let's read. Now, let me give you the biblical basis the biblical basis for the title Theotokos. Theotokos. Watch here. Let's read. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with, with judgment and with just, justice. From henceforth, even forever... The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay, guys, you understand what the prophecy said? Unto us a child is born. Yelad yulad. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, the mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. But notice verse 7. Notice verse 7. Guys, try to read more than you engage in side discussion. Try to read more than engaging in side discussion. Why would someone leave me a voice message now? See, Satan distracted left and right. All right. Hey, uh, Aldi. Aldi, I'm live, and you just sent me a text message. That's Musa's live. Okay, brother. Thank you. All right. Okay, now pay attention to me. See, I'm getting distracted, guys. Have you noticed Satan's getting angry? May the Lord Jesus rebuke all evil attacks of the enemy in jesus name okay but now i want you to look at verse 7 again guys pay attention to verse 7 again of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end and upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this okay did you catch what it says he sits on the throne of david and he will rule forever and ever a child born who is a son given. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Okay, now, Isaiah 9, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 9, verses 1 and 2. Watch here. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as wax in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, but afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath light shine. Pay attention. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. A light shining from Galilee of the Gentiles. Pay attention. 
They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Okay, now pay attention to what you just read. Let's go to uh, uh, Luke 1, 67. Luke 1, 67. John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, filled with the Holy Spirit, breaks out in praise. He breaks out praising God. Okay, pay attention, Luke 1, 67. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, and his father was uh, was filled with the Holy Ghost. Whose father? John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, now notice what he quotes, Luke 179. Do me a favor. First, last, post Luke 179 with Isaiah 9, verse 2. Be patient, guys. Do not get involved in side talk. I need you to pay attention. Ze Zechariah filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice the language. Zechariah says, To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Zechariah filled with the Holy Spirit breaks out in these words. What words? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Did you guys catch it or no? If you guys are having side talks, you won't catch it. Did you see what Zechariah uttered? Being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moved him to break out in words of praise to God for the birth of John the Baptist, who's preparing for the Messiah. What words did he utter in Luke 179? What words did he utter in Luke 179? What were the words that he uttered? One more time. Luke 179 and Isaiah 9 verse 2. One more time. I want all of you to catch it. I'm already boring you guys. I'm losing people. To give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now notice Isaiah 9, 10, 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Is he referring to Isaiah 9 verse 2? Is that what Zechariah just uttered as the Holy Spirit filled him to break out in praise of God for the birth of John the Baptist, who's the forerunner of Jesus Christ? Did he just utter the words of Isaiah 9 verse 2? Did he just utter the words of Isaiah 9 verse 2? Luis and everyone, are you getting it? Are you getting it? That he just uttered Isaiah 9, 2. So wait, if he uttered Isaiah 9, verse 2, does that mean that Zechariah, filled with the Holy Spirit, realized that Mary is going to give birth to the mighty God of Isaiah 9? Because that's the prophecy of Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9 says, A great light will shine from Galilee of the Gentiles, and that great light is a child who will be born who is the mighty God. So does that show that Zechariah is aware of the prophecy of Isaiah 9? Everyone got it? Okay, second point again. Let's look at Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7 one more time. Thank the mods for helping me to help you so you can see it. All the connections here. I hope Luis is getting it as well. Okay, Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now notice... Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So notice this. A child will be born who is a son given, who sits on the throne of David forever. And that son will be given. The child born is the mighty God who sits on the throne of David forever. Where will that child shine forth from? Where will the child shine forth from? Isaiah 9, verse 1. Isaiah 9, verse 1. Watch here, guys. Watch here. Here's the biblical case for the title Theo Theotokos. 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 Here. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first 
He lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the, the nations. Galilee of the nations. You guys catching it? Galilee of the nations, a great light will shine. Galilee of the nations, a child will be born, who's a son given, who's the mighty God, who sits on the throne of David to rule it forever. Now let's go to Luke 1, 26 to 33. Luke 1, 26 to 33. Why do you think I embrace the title Theotokos? Because it is biblical. Biblical. I'm a biblicist. Okay. Now read with me. Read with me, please. Please, guys, if you don't read, you're not going to make these connections. Okay. Let's read. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee. What did Isaiah 9 1 say? Galilee of the nations. Oh, boy. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Guys, pay attention. Isaiah 9 being fulfilled. Hey, watch. Right? And when... She saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this sh should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, guys, pay attention, please. Isaiah 9, a great light, Galilee of the nations, a child born who is a son given, the mighty God sits on the throne of David. Okay. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. A son is given and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, a great light. He shall be great, and he shall be call, called the Son of the Highest, a son given. Whose son? The Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Oh, that's Isaiah 9, 7. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Wow, folks. <whistles> Gabriel just announced to Mary, you are going to fulfill Isaiah 9, Mary. Mary, do you know who you are? Guys, let it sink in. Pay attention. Mary, do you know who you are? Who am I? You are the mother of the child born, who's the son given, who's the mighty God. You're going to give birth to the mighty God, who's going to be a human baby. The mighty God will be born from your blessed womb. So I'm going to give birth to the mighty God of Isaiah 9? Yes, I am the woman. From whom the child will be born, who's the mighty God? Yes, Mary. So let's do the math because I'm kind of stupid. I'm kind of stupid, guys. Okay, I'm, I'm a little stupid. Help me. Mary gives birth to the child who's the mighty God. The mighty God is going to enter her womb to become a human being and be born from her as a human baby. So that's the mighty God in her womb. And yet she's not the mother of God. Okay, yeah, it uh, makes sense. <whistles> yep, makes sense. No, no, she's not the mother of God. But wait, she's the one conceiving the human nature of the mighty God. Yeah. Didn't Isaiah say that's the mighty God in her womb who will be born from her? Yes. But you still don't want to call her the mother of God. Even though you just admit she's the woman who gives birth to the child, who's the son of the highest, who's the mighty God. And you still don't want to call her the mother of God. Okay, yeah, I'm convinced. Yep, that's another one, Ariel. I was going to go to that one next, bro. Mother from a different one. God bless you for the super chats. Reno, we're not talking about you. Don't be, don't, don't be so, don't be so sensitive. Now, Orthodox defense, I know the Nestorians have received a bad rap. It's not simply my opinion. Even Robert Spencer, Robert Spencer has done some search. Research and I actually found statements that the Assyrian church called the Nestorian church, the church of my ancestors, were falsely condemned for believing there's two persons, a divine Christ and human Jesus. But the statements from their bishops 
And there are statements from the 6th century where they say Christ is one person, one person with two natures. Where people got confused is the terminology that they use in Aramaic. Now, to further confirm that the Nestorian church did not believe this heresy, if you're a Catholic, this should carry some weight for you. If you are Catholic, this should carry some weight for you. In 1994, Mardincha IV, the patriarch of the Assyrian Church of the East, which is called the Nestorian Church, went to Rome, and he and Pope John wrote a Christological confession confirming that both churches, the Roman Catholic and the Nestorian Church, falsely called, believe that one eternal divine person who has two natures. Where people got confused is the terminology that the Aramaic-speaking Christians used in describing Christ, because they would speak of treknume, trekiane. So the debate was, what do you mean by knuma and what do you mean by kiana? That's where the confusion is. But with that said, yeah, but what does knuma mean, Orthodox defense? That's the point. What do they mean by knuma? This is where language gets kind of confusing. And you are fully aware, Orthodox defense, that even the words... Usia and hypostasios were being misused and defined differently by various groups, which led to confusion even up to the Council of Nicaea, right? Even the word usia and hypostasios, the way they were using it, some were using it differently from others, which led to confusion because someone would use the word hypostasios differently from this other guy and they thought they were saying the same thing. It's the problem with language. Are you with me there? But I will tell you, this I will tell you, that the so-called Nestorian Church, the church of my ancestors, let me just be quick on this. They don't believe in the title Theotokos. They reject it. So yes, at the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD, in 431 AD, at the Council of Ephesus, the Council of Ephesus, the Assyrian church, which later became called the Nestorian church, was condemned because they refused to call her Theotokos. They said, no, Christotokos. Why? Because if you call her the mother of God, the God bearer, it's going to breed confusion, just like it did today, right? Orthodox defense, brother. Today, when I said she's the mother of God, ha, woo, he, ha, he, woo, pss, pss, it's your birthday, it's your birthday, go Sammy, go Sam, right? George, Azizi, Gilgamesh, Azizi, please let's not turn this into a session on what the Aramaic terms Qnuma, Parsupa, Kiana mean. Please. There are qualified, qualified Assyrian Christian theologians and scholars who can tell you what the language means and does it mean. And I'll mention one. Look him up. Orthodox defense. Look him up. His name is Kasha Shimli. Kasha Shimli, California. An amazing and Syrian Christian priest and theologian and a humble servant of Jesus Christ. He is a genius when it comes to the Aramaic language. And as Gilgamesh told you, Orthodox, the term for person is parsupa. Parsupa. That's person. So they don't say that Jesus has tre parsupe. The term knuma is where it gets tricky and confusing. Yes, Sid Pan, it is. Okay, guys, can we not get into tangents about communion of the saints? Yeah, the Assyrian church, when they say treknuma, they do not mean what you mean by person. I know it's confusing because they say treknume u trekiane. Treknume, trekiane. Now, how do they define it? Kiana means two natures and two characteristics that go with each nature. But then it gets confusing because they say the Godhead is klaknume. 
where there cannot necessarily mean or only mean an attribute or characteristic. So now you're going to get me into a topic that is. <laughs> I should go back listening to David Wood. It was more, it was funner listening to David Wood. It really was. Okay. You guys are going to isolate most of the people here who do not understand this sophisticated technical theological jargon. Konuma, Parsupa, Kiana, Hupostasios, Usia, Fusis. Okay. Can we get back to, does the Bible teach Mary is the mother of God, the God-bearer? Christy, God bless you. Okay. I know, Orthodox, you're a nerd. You, you love theological precision. But, brother, keep it simple for us who are in milk. Do you think many of the evangelicals here know about these issues? You know it because you're an Orthodox. Catholics know it. And the so-called Nestorians know it. And the Coptics know it. You got because this is what caused a division and a split. You guys divided and split over these issues. But an evangelical has a hard time understanding the Bible, let alone church history. Flamboyant. Here's what's here's what you want to get shocked, flamboyant? Here, here, here. You, you want me to shock you? Do you know that the Assyrian church called Nestorians believe Jesus is God in the flesh? Here, I'm going to, Gilgamesh, he's part of the church of the East, the church of my ancestors. Gilgamesh, okay. Was Jesus still fully God in the blessed womb of Mary? Was he still fully God in the blessed womb of Mary? Watch right here, guys. This is the official teaching of the church of the East. Guys, listen. Church of the East. Was she fully God? Did you hear what Gilgamesh said? The guy that you just called an historian. So he was fully God while he took on the human nature from his blessed mother, right? Right, Gilgamesh? Okay. Now, was Jesus two persons or one person? One person or two? One person who's God and man. I know Gilgamesh, but can you just answer the question? Because you, you're labeled Nestorian, Aziza. I know you're not. That's what you've been labeled. Is he two persons or one person? Was he one person in his, the womb of his blessed mother? God who took on flesh from her womb? Guys, okay, this man here is part of what you call the Nestorian church. He, from his own mouth, told you it's one person, and he was God in her womb taking on human nature. But he won't call her the mother of God. And yet you both believe the same thing. Do you see? You, you guys see that? You guys catch that? You're both saying the same thing. Al-Masihu Akbar, Al-Masihu Akbar. Al-Masihu Akbar. You're both saying the same thing but you're both going to insist the other is wrong because you should call her mother of god and this will say no call her the mother of christ no call her mother of christ no call her mother of god but hold on you <laughs> put down that horse you they call you an historian do you still believe that human baby forming in the blessed womb of his virgin mother was he still God? Yeah, he was God in her womb. So God was in her womb? Yeah. You believe in the mother of God title. <laughs> Park that horse there. So that human baby was God in the womb, right? God, yeah. Oh, so you're both saying the same thing? Yeah. And you still divided over the fact that you don't want to use that title and they insist you do? Yeah. Gee, you guys are a bunch of geniuses. No disrespect intended. Right? God bless you, Nada. That's why when someone attacks the quote unquote Nestorians, I get, you know what's funny, folks? You know what's funny? I'm supposed to be the Protestant evangelical. You know that, right? And I'm the one bringing peace to you guys. I'm Protestant. I'm supposed to protest and attack. 
Why are you putting me in a situation to try to reconcile you guys? What's wrong with you guys, man? No, hey, Riaz. Allahu Akbar, Riaz. Why are you timing out Gilgamesh? Can someone time out Riaz, my own mod? So can can you Orthodox and you Catholics and you so-called Nasurians, can you help me understand? Why am I trying to reconcile all you guys? No, man, he's he's a Syrian. He's he's one he's my people. We we Assyrians, we have the we have a license to mock each other. Unless they call me a heretic, that's a different story. Okay, so now Orthodox and uh Nestorian, so called, and Catholic. Why am I trying to reconcile you guys? Okay, anyway, are we now back to the point? Yeah, but Orthodox defense, they were against the title Mother of God. He just admit that. Orthodox defense, I'm not saying you're wrong. They do not accept the title Mother of God. They think it miscommunicates. They think it miscommunicates Orthodox defense. They think it's wrong to say that because it's going to confuse people. Do you remember how I got attacked earlier today, Orthodox defense, on that subject? Yeah, we're going to change the title of this session today. I'm going to talk about Hebrews 1 tomorrow. Okay. But you just heard Orthodox defense. Galgamesh, who got timed out by Riaz, that spy, the ISIS spy. He's a spy from ISIS, pretending to be a Christian. You just heard him say, Orthodox defense, Jesus was truly God in Mary's womb. Jesus was fully God in Mary's womb. The human nature and physical body she conceived was conceived for God who was in her womb. He just said that. And this is the official teaching of the so-called Nestorian church. And they don't like that label because when you say Nestorian, then you're accusing them of heresy. But you heard my brother Gilgamesh, whom Riaz, the ISIS spy, just blocked and timed out to cause wars between Christians as he pretends to be a Christian. You heard him say, yes, Jesus is God in her womb. God was in her womb. And he's one person. And George Adishu, you have an Assyrian name, but are you also from the Nestorian church, quote-unquote? I will, Michelle. Just let me get to this because I'm here. Hold on, brother. Let me just uh, – I just want to just – George, what, was he, what tradition he's from. And George is another one. He's going to confirm it if he's from that church. Okay. Yeah, hold on. I don't know if George is going to say, okay, anyway. George, I guess he too decided to take a break. He got scared. I called him up by name. George, it's okay, Juan. You're my brother. Don't be scared. I'm giving you the limelight. Agamini. Okay, folks. Did you see how Gabriel announced to Mary she is the mother of the mighty God? Did you see how Gabriel announced to Mary she is the mother of the mighty God? Did you guys see that? Yeah, guys, do me a favor. I did a multi-part series on communion of saints. Guys, listen to me, please. Thank you, Brady. Thank you, brother. Listen to me. I argued myself into the belief of communion of saints and icons from the Bible. I was not led to this position because of Catholics or Orthodox. What I did was I heard all sides. Protestants, Catholic and Orthodox, and I meditated on the Bible and what the Bible said, and I've come to the conclusion that communion of saints is a biblical teaching, if you rightly divide the word, and I have a multi-part series on it on my YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, and I wrote an article showing the Bible does not condemn, condemn icons. Do you want that article? The Bible does not condemn icons. Do you want the article? You want me to give it to you? And these are not arguments I came up with and invented. These are arguments that have been used for centuries by men of God that put me to shame that I can't even be mentioned in the same league. Okay, let me get you that. Whew, this is going to be another long session. I hope I'm still blessing you guys. I don't know if I am. I feel like um, I want to talk about a topic, but we go into tangents. I'll do a session on my article. How about that?
I'm going to do a session on my article. How about that? Here you go. Here's the article. Here's the article, folks. The biblical basis for icons. The biblical basis for icons. Wow. Anyway. I'll do one if you guys want. Here you go. Okay, folks. Can we now stop bashing each other? Yeah, Diago says I sound Catholic. Orthodox say I sound Orthodox. <laughs> All right. I heard say, hey, hey, man, you sound Orthodox. Catholic said, man, man you're, you're close. You're about to cro cross the Tiber. Even James White said on a session a while back, Sam is uh, about to cross the Tiber. He's going to be uh, Catholic. Folks, can I tell you what I want to be? Uh, M.A. I don't even know how to adjust you. Okay, I don't know. I may do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Forget about it, man. Forget. It. Okay. I want to follow the Bible to the best of my ability and trust the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth. Why do you think I've changed so much? Because by the grace of God's Spirit, I've seen that there's a lot of biblical support for things that at one time I thought were contrary to Scripture. Let me repeat again. I came to the conclusion that communion of saints. Intercession of saints and icons are true because the Bible confirms these doctrines. I didn't come and accept these doctrines solely on the testimony of the church fathers. That would not have done it for me. That would not have done it for me. What did it for me was the biblical verses that I could not explain away anymore. And I praise the Holy Spirit of the living God. That the Holy Spirit of the living God convicted me in such a way to let me be free to accept what the Bible teaches and no longer try to explain them away. No longer try to explain them away. Because these passages would play in my mind over and over and over again. And I kept trying to find reasons to explain the way until finally I gave up. I said, Holy Spirit, you are my God. You are our God. You are the perfect teacher. You correct. You discipline. You perfect. You educate. Guide me. I yield to you. And I accepted it. And I did prove it. Someone just told me prove it right here. Hello. Here's the article. Hello. There's the article. And I did a multi-part series on communion of saints. It's on my YouTube session, uh, YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel, subscribe and say communion of saints. Multi-part. I did it. I've done it. Been there. Got the t-shirt. Okay. I've done it. Let me repeat again. I did not come to embrace these teachings solely because of church history. I embrace these teachings because of the massive amount of biblical support. Because my commitment is to the Bible. And I'm trusting the Spirit to guide me. And the verses kept playing in my mind. You know how many years it took me to finally yield? It didn't take me overnight. Years and years of struggling and agonizing. No, but it can't be. But yeah, but this. Ah! And then finally. Finally. Right? But I'm asking the Holy Spirit and begging the Holy Spirit and beseeching the Holy Spirit, my God, our God, that he will not allow me to go to the extreme where I become simply wishy-washy ecumenical. May the Holy Spirit save me from compromise. Please, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, save all of us. Now, that said, can we get back to, is the only doctrine holding you back? Yeah. Yeah, I, I sola scriptura, I'm still, listen, I'm going to be up front with you guys. I am still convinced of sola scriptura. I've heard the best of all positions. And if I'm wrong, the Holy Spirit show me I'm wrong. And until he does, this is where I stand. And arguing with me to convince me otherwise. See, I'll tell you something about me real quickly so we can go into the topic. If you debate me, you're not going to get me to listen. And the Assyrians can tell you why. The Assyrians, the, the, the Assyrians will tell you. We Assyrians don't like to be wrong, and we don't like people to challenge us to prove we're wrong, especially if you're Jilwaya. Okay, here. Gilgamesh will tell you. I'm Jilwaya. Jilu, hot-headed. We are the most gorgeous, handsome group of Assyrians. All the other Assyrians are haters because they're jealous how good-looking we are. Okay, so David will tell you. See, Jiru here, David, my brother. Jilwa bukta, bukte with, bukta, chaliolibu, shatrana, shatrani. Okay, okay. We Jilus, not only are we the best-looking dudes on the planet, 
We are hot-headed. When someone challenges me, I forget I'm Christian. My Jilu nature kicks in, and I remember St. Nicholas, who slapped the taste out of Arius' mouth. Who slapped the taste out of Arius' mouth. Because St. Nicholas had Jilu blood in him. You guys didn't know that. He had Jilu blood. So when someone tells me, you're wrong, and you're this and that, I forget I'm Christian, and I get Jilu. Agamini. Agamini. Dat dal. Anit babu. Agadaha. Bukhlu. See, the Jilus understood what I just said. Hey, Amanda, you're Jilu too? <laughs> Are you saying? See, the Assyrians just knew I got Jilu on them. The Assyrians knew I just got Jilu, right? I got Jilu on them, right? So I guess Amanda's Assyrian, right? When I start speaking Jilu, you know I've lost it. Guys, once I go into Jilu mood, you know I've lost it. I'm not at walking in the spirit. I'm now in the flesh. Once I get Jiru, I forget my, you know. Oh, hey, I mean, yeah, I love Danny Zia. One of my best friends, it was my best man. Tell him I love him, right? And you know what I'm talking about, Amanda. Your beautiful Aunt Mary, a warrior Jiru, because he can lose it too. And you know how the Jirus are, right, when we speak. Agamini, like enu peltnane, dat dao, ah, mupo dit, yala, ah, brun babu hi, didit brun babu di hewut kemendi. See? Let me translate what I just said. Yeah? Uh, who? Yeah, you? Your father's father. If you're the son of your father, do something. I'll pull out your eyes. That's what I just said in the Syrian. Hey, David. David. Lasser, Khoni, Azizi, Lasser, Kli, Khalilapu, Larazilla, Muskina. And by the way, we're going to get back to the topic, I promise you. Okay. By the way, David, la LMAO. We don't laugh my aspirations off. LMBO, laugh my buttocks off. Khalilubu, they keep it G rated. Okay. Jilu is the language of love. Here, the Assyrian women, they're going to confirm. It's what French is to love, Jilu is. That's the language of love. Here, when we see a girl we like, you know what we do? Come on, watch it, Ranta. Holy and Shweribach. Ziamranach. In La Plutlach Minni. Ora, Zimup on the bit Babach. And it Babach Peltman. They are in Shukli, huh? Holy and Shweribach. That's the language of love. Yep. Let me translate what I just said. Jilu is the language of love. I just said, hey, girl, you're beautiful. You know, you got some fine-looking whiskers there. If you don't go out with me, I will pluck out the eyes of your father. Come over here and let me kiss you. Your whiskers are so gorgeous. That's what I just said. You don't get more romantic than that. Okay. Now, with that said, All right, anyway. With that said... Are we now back to normal? See, well, we went from 220. We're down to 195. That Jidu language didn't work for many people. Okay. Exactly, Alex. Alex. That's how you got say, hey. And you can you have permission to translate in English. Hey, girl, come here. You don't go out with me. Your father's eyes I pluck out. I'm gonna take a cane and right between his skull. Come here. You got such beautiful whiskers. All right. Okay, now, with that said, everyone now calm. We're down now. We're calm. Exactly. Exactly, Amanda. I forgot that part. Megitnana biyad babach. Qora. Biyad babach megitnana. What I just said is, I'm going to burn your father's house, you blind bat. Don't you see how handsome? I'll burn your father. Okay. With that said, are we now back to proving from Scripture? The title, Theotokos, is biblical. Can we go back there? Okay. Can we go back? Can we get back to the topic? Okay. If we can get back to the topic, do me a favor. Help me to help you. Your sectar sectarian differences, please don't bring them up here. 
There are channels that are devoted, Orthodox apologetic channels, to prove the Orthodox Church has maintained the pure apostolic teaching. There are Roman Catholic channels that prove that the Roman Catholic Church has maintained the pure apostolic teaching. There are Syrian Church channels. Every group have their channels defending their perspective viewpoint. Go to those channels because right here I want to provide a platform where I can teach the core doctrines of the Christian faith to a variety of Trinitarian groups. And they can take what I have to say, reject any mistakes, any place they disagree with me, and accept that which is true for the glory of Christ. Now, coming back to the issue, did everyone see, did everyone see that Gabriel is announcing to Mary that she's the fulfillment of Isaiah 9? Did you guys see that? Did everyone see that? He was alluding to the language of Isaiah 9. Okay. So are you telling me when Gabriel tells her, you are that blessed woman who's going to give birth to that child, who's a son given, the son of the highest, who will be great, who's the mighty God, that Mary's not the mother of God? That the child in her womb is not God in the flesh? That's Isaiah 9. Now, let's take it a little further. David, let me finish this topic. We all believe in communion. It's what we believe about it. Transubstantiation, consubstantiation, real spiritual presence, symbolic. Let me finish one topic, then we can go into other topics. Let me finish one topic. Hold on. Hold on. And Masihu Akbar, and Masihu Akbar. All right. Can we focus, guys? Please help me focus. We went from 230, 187. I'm losing people. I'm losing people. Because they're getting tired of this. Okay. So, clear? Luke 1. Now, let's continue reading. Are we ready now? Let's re read now Luke 1. Luke 1. We're going to read Luke 1, 34, all the way to 39. I'm sorry. Yeah, Luke 1, 34 all the way to 39. Diego, I'll try to answer your question on the Trinity this week, brother. I've been busy. God willing, I will. Okay, now let's read, guys. Read with me. Read with me. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Okay. How can I have a son? I don't know a man. Okay, pay attention. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, which she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month. She's six months pregnant with, with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Now here, guys, pay attention, because I'm going to pack this. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with, with haste into a city of J Judah. Now, what is the angel trying to do here? Here's what he's doing to Mary. To Mary. He's trying to show Mary, you're not hallucinating. This is not hallucination. You're actually seeing me. Meaning she is the servant of God. Handmaid means a servant of God. Old English, Reno. But focus. What she, what the angel is saying is, you're not hallucinating. This is not your overactive imagination. You're actually seeing me, an angel, and you're actually conceiving the mighty God in your womb by the Holy Spirit. And here's proof. Now notice the proof he's going to give her, that you're not hallucinating. You know your cousin, your kinswoman Elizabeth, right? Yes. She's barren, right? Yes. And she's old, right? Yes. You will find she's six months pregnant. The woman who was barren all her life, who's now an old woman, she's now six months pregnant. That's a sign to you that you're not hallucinating, that I did appear to you. I am Gabriel. And you just conceived by the Spirit, the physical body, human nature of the mighty God, the Son of God, who's now in your womb. And you're going to know you're not hallucinating because when you see her, you're going to see her six months pregnant. Showing you God can do the impossible. 
He can make a barren woman be pregnant at an old age and he cause you a blessed virgin to conceive the physical body, the human nature of his son. You understand what he's doing here? You understand what, what the point was, right? Because now I'm going to show you something that you thought that's amazing. Now you're going to get blown away. You thought that's amazing. Oh, wait. If you're ready now, let's take it to the second point. You ready now for the second point? God bless you, Diego. Okay. Let's go to the second half. Luke 1, 40 to 45. Luke 1, 40 to 45. So if you ask the Holy Spirit, folks, ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate you and guide you out to truth and yield to him, he will show you wonders in the Bible because the Bible is majestic. It is supernatural. It is divine. It's the word of the true God. Okay. Okay, now read with me. Read with me. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Now watch 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe in her womb, six months pregnant. John is six months old in the womb. The baby in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. The babe in her womb leapt. The baby in her womb. He's only six months old in the womb. Heard the voice of Mary and in the womb recognized the voice of Mary and he jumped. And notice it says, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now notice what she says. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And in Assyrian, when you say it, it's beautiful. When I say it in Assyrian, I start crying. Yimmit Mari. Yimmit Mari. See, I'm going to get moving my spirit. Yimmit Mari. Yimmit Paruqi. Yimmit Alahi. Okay. The mother of my Lord should come to me. Now notice 44 and 45. Watch here. 44 and 45. Watch here. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believe. Mary, you are so blessed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Now let's unpack it. You ready for me to unpack this? Guys, if I get teary-eyed, bear with me. And I'm not doing this for a show, honestly. Every time I talk about the mother of my Lord, I start getting moved in my heart. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Notice the first thing. Mary had just showed up. And Elizabeth already knew Mary was pregnant. How did Elizabeth know that? She was pregnant because she said, the mother of my Lord. How did she know? Mary didn't say anything. She just entered because the Holy Spirit was revealing it to her. The Holy Spirit revealed to Elizabeth, the one is coming. Who's coming? The mother of your Lord. She's about to enter. And here's an older woman. Guys, let it sink in. That's going to move me. <clears throat> Here's an older woman looking at a young, beautiful virgin maiden, much younger than her. She's older, old enough to be her mother. And she looks at her and she says, the mother of my Lord, <clears throat> Yimmit Mari. Yimmit Mari. I'm sorry. <clears throat> she looks at that. <clears throat> Beautiful young Jewish virgin. And she already knows. She already knows. <clears throat> That's the mother of my Lord. That's the mother of my Lord. And on top of that, here is a six-month-old unborn child. 
a six-month-old unborn child, because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and Elizabeth Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit allowed John in the womb to discern the sound of the mother of his Lord. And when he heard the voice of Mary, he left. Folks, how can you not love her? Notice why he leapt. She said, my baby leapt when he heard your voice because he recognized the voice of the mother of his God. So did Elizabeth know? Did Elizabeth know that this woman has conceived the physical body, human nature of my Lord? Yeah, M.A., you know why I'm going to end up turning this against you, embarrassing you, right? Because what did Jesus say? Those who keep the word of God are blessed, right? Let me reread Luke 145 to you, M.A. M.A., I know you want to denigrate the mother of Christ, but let me put you in your place. Don't block her. Let me show her that she doesn't know the Bible. Notice what she just quoted. She quoted where it says, Blessed is the womb that bear thee and the paps which thou hast suckled. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Now let me put you in your place, M.A. Notice what it says about Mary. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. So, M.A., because you're an ignoramus and biblically illiterate, Luke already told you that Jesus wasn't excluding her. Jesus was saying, more blessed are those who keep my word. And yet here we're told Mary believed and kept the word of God and she's blessed. So why would you be that stupid to misquote the words of Jesus to make Jesus say something he wasn't intending to say. He was saying, it's not simply she's my mother. It's because she obeyed the word of God and accepted God's will for her to be my mother that makes her blessed. So if you read this passage in the context, Mary is one of those that Jesus blessed for keeping the word of God. You biblical, illiterate ignoramus. And to further embarrass you, M.A., that you think you know the Bible, let's read Luke 1, 46 to 50. Yes, Ariel, the same gospel. But I don't blame the ignoramus because I was an ignoramus, a little bit like him or her because I did the same thing. But guys, read. Read with me. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the low state of his handmaiden, my status. For behold, from henceforth... All generations shall call me blessed. But this illiterate ignoramus just said that Mary lied. Because Mary said, because of what God did for me in honoring me to be the mother of the mighty God, all generations will call me blessed. But she's, she or he, whoever it is, so stupid to take Jesus' words out of context in order to show, no, Mary's not blessed at all. You biblical illiterate ignoramus. And you wonder why I get angry. You wonder why I get angry. You biblical, illiterate ignoramus. And people wonder, Sam's an angry person. Jesus was not saying Mary is not blessed. What he was saying to the woman is, my, being my mother is not what matters. It's What matters is keeping the word of God. But do you realize that she kept God's word? that came to her to be my mother. So the very fact I'm her son shows she's blessed too because the angel said, you're going to be the mother of this one. And she goes, I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to his will. So that means Jesus wasn't excluding her. He was simply trying to reiterate the fact it's not biological relations to me that <laughs> makes you blessed. It's obeying God's word that makes you blessed. And Mary obeyed God's word in obeying God to be the mother. So she's, I mean, really, do I need to explain that? Do I need to explain that? What Jesus did mean and what he did mean? So let's forget Luke 1. Let's forget that Elizabeth, you know, this interpretation pits the Holy Spirit against Jesus. God forbid such blasphemy. You know why it pits the Holy Spirit against Jesus? God forbid this blasphemy. Let's read Luke 1, 41, 42 again. Luke 1, 41, 42. Who made Elizabeth, who moved Elizabeth to say that she's blessed? Luke 1, 41, 42. Watch here. 
And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women. No, 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 no. You got to wait for Luke 11, 27, 28. Shouldn't say that. But wait, the Holy Spirit filled her to say that. And the Holy Spirit doesn't oppose Christ because Christ and the Spirit are in perfect, inseparable unity and union. So you're going to make Jesus say something contrary to the Holy Spirit and make the Holy Spirit say something contrary to Jesus. Really? Really? That's how you interpret Luke 11, 27, 28? That's how you're going to interpret Luke 11. I don't blame this person. I used to do that too until it, a light switch went on. Honestly, the Lord bear was my light. I said, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait. Luke 1. Elizabeth filled the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you amongst women. Luke 1. Mary says, all generations will call me blessed because of what God has done for me and me submitting to his word. So wait. Mary obeyed the word of God. Jesus says, who is blessed? Those who obey the word of God. Mary obeyed the word of God in becoming the mother of the mighty God. So that passage doesn't exclude Mary. Reno, you can leave. Do you want to leave? Can I help you leave, Reno? Guys, he says I'm dragging. You guys agree with him when I'm dragging? If they say you, you're, you're, you're right, I'm dragging, then you stay. No, it's not unbiblical. Brought it, um, Sheikha, hey, you're a Syrian too? No, it's not unbiblical. You know why? Let me explain to you. Is the title Queen of Heaven unbiblical? No. Can I prove that to you? Since we're going to change the title. Today, today we're changing the title. The title is going to be The Blessed Mother of the Mighty God. Mods, we're going to change it to Mary, the Blessed Mother of the Mighty God. Okay, we're going to change the title. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. Okay. Let me tell you why it's not unbiblical. It's not unbiblical. Okay. Brat Mshicha, do you believe, and I, I, I have a funny feeling that's uh, Sam, Sam Shimon. Okay. Do you believe that believers in Jesus Christ who are purchased by the blood of Jesus, born of the Holy Spirit? Okay. Do you believe? Those who are born of the Spirit, purchased by the blood of Christ, will reign with Christ as kings and queens. Let me give you the biblical proof for it. Revelation 1, verses 5 to 6. Revelation 1, verses 5 to 6, specifically verse 6. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Okay, Pedro, I'm going to give it to you. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our own sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, when it says Jesus has made believers kings, does that include women? So the term king means he's made all of us royalty, even women. Believers, male and female, will rule, will be kings and queens reigning with Christ. Right? Do you see it? Revelation 1.6. Okay, Revelation 5, verses 9 to 10. Revelation 5, verses 9 to 10. Okay. Revelation 5, verses 9 to 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by... By thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and they shall reign on the earth. Revelation 20, verses 4 to 6. Revelation 20, verses 4 to 6. And I saw thrones, thrones. And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, rather neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Reigned with Christ a thousand years. 
But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Okay, did you catch it? And shall reign with him a thousand years. Reign with him. Okay, let me ask you the question. All believers who are redeemed by the blood of Christ, born of the Spirit, we will all be kings and queens reigning with Christ over creation. So, is Mary redeemed? Is the mother of our Lord redeemed? Is she going to reign with Christ as queen? So, is it wrong to say queen of heaven? She is a queen who will reign. Now, the, the question is, is she reigning as queen in heaven now? Ask. Here you have Nestorians. I don't mean to dis I don't mean Nestorians to disrespect, disrespect you. You know what I mean. Like, Catholics and Orthodox, ask them what evidence they have that leads them to believe she's reigning right now with Christ as queen of heaven. So, yes, there's a biblical basis for queen of heaven. That's not against scripture. But if you want to know the historical arguments for whether she was taken to heaven to rule as queen, you got the Orthodox here. You got the Roman Catholics here. You got the Assyrian church. I don't want to call them uh, historians because that's a uh, misnomer. They will give you the evidence that leads them to, to, to that conclusion. Single now, not to the exclusion of everyone else, Foki. You're still not getting it. Here, I'll prove it to you. Orthodox, Roman Catholic, and Church of the East. All of you who believe that Mary reigns as a queen of heaven. Do you believe she will be reigning in isolation from all believers or in union with all believers? Will she be reigning in union with believers? Yes or no? In union, right? Okay, thank you. So it's not alone in isolation. And Ariel said something very wonderful. Even though all of us will reign, some of us will be greater than others in rank and union. You want me to give you proof for that? Some of us will be greater in authority and rank over others. You want me to give you proof for that? So though we all rule, some of us will be higher in authority and rank. Let me give you the proof for that. Matthew 5, 19. Okay. You skeptics, you always want proof. Matthew 5, 19. Okay. Matthew 5, 19. Read with me. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments shall... And shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Notice least and great, huh? Oh, least and great. You want to be great? Do great things for Jesus here. Teach people to obey his commands and humble yourself. You want to be least? Be lazy and be a bum. Okay, that's one. Let me give you another one. Matthew 11, verse 11. Matthew 11, verse 11. Man, this was a long session. Matthew 11, verse 11. Yep. Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least... In the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Oh, wow. Did you catch it? Least in the kingdom will be greater than John because John is Old Testament. All the Old Testament are, uh, saints are saved, but they will be inferior to believers who come after Christ and are part of his church. We believers, because we come after Jesus' his death and resurrection and are part of his church, the bride, we are greater in status than all the Old Testament saints, including John. Bam! Woo! That's what Jesus just said. Exactly. No one worships Mary, guy. Come on. You know that. 
You just read it right there, Matthew 11, 11. I didn't make it up. We didn't post it one more time. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Meaning all those people up to John, he's greater than all of them. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Did you catch what he just said? Up until John, he's the greatest of all humans. Greater than Moses, greater than Abraham. But I'm telling you, the least in my kingdom will be greater than him. That means the least ranking member of the body of Christ after Christ's death and resurrection will be greater in authority than John, greater in authority than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because of Jesus. Exactly, Luvanter. Now, Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. That's what Jesus said. Read with me. Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. Read, read. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what wilt thou, what, what do you want? What do you want with me? She saith unto him, grant that there these my two sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. I want them to have the highest seats in your kingdom. One of them on your right, the other on your left. Now notice what Jesus says. Notice what he says. But Jesus answered and said, you know not what you ask. Are you able? Are you able? <clears throat> To drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Now notice what she says. And they said unto him, we are able. We're able. Now watch what he says. And he saith unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Now the other ten get upset. Man, why would you make such a request? What do you think? You're better than us? They all get upset. Man, what's wrong with you, man? How would you ask to be given the highest position in the kingdom? What, are you better than us? They start quarreling. Now notice what happens. Pay attention now. And when the tent heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles, the rulers of the Gentiles, they exercise authority. They impose their rule, their authority over them. And they, their great exercise authority upon them. They impose their rule on us. But notice what Jesus says about us Christians. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Let him be your servant. You want to be great in my kingdom? You want to have a high rank in my kingdom? Be nothing here. Be a servant here. And whosoever will be chief among you, you want to be chief? Let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. So did you guys catch it? Although we are all kings and queens in the kingdom, some of us will be higher in rank than others. And all the members of the body of Christ, all the members of the body of Christ, because we came after Christ, after his death and resurrection, and we are the bride of Christ, whereas all the Old Testament saints leading up to John all the Old Testament saints leading up to John, they were the best men. They were not the bridegroom. They were the friend of the bridegroom. They too will be in the kingdom, but we, the bride of Christ, will be higher than them in authority and position according to Jesus. Exactly, Alex. You understand what you just read? And you want me to shock you? Do you know who, who was the foundation of heavenly Jerusalem? You know heavenly Jerusalem? The heavenly city where believers will dwell, which will come down on earth, has 12 foundations. Has 12 gates with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. But you know what the foundation of heavenly Jerusalem is? Heavenly Jerusalem where we will live in, which is our mother that comes down to the earth? The 12 apostles of the Lamb. Not Moses. Not Isaiah, not Jeremiah, but the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Here, Revelation 21, verses 9 to 14. 
Revelation 21, verses 9 to 14. Oops. Revelation 21, verses 9 to 14. Moses isn't the foundation. Abraham isn't the foundation. Jacob isn't the foundation. Isaac, the apostles of Jesus Christ are. Here, read. Don't believe me. Revelation 21, verses 9 to 14. Here. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Here. Let's read. Hold on. Ah, come on. Okay, read with me. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the se uh, seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Now watch here. Guys, read. Read and watch. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the 12 gates, 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel on the gates. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. And on the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. <whistles> Who are the foundation that keeps heavenly Jerusalem stable? The 12 apostles of the Lamb. Not Moses, not Isaac, not Isaiah, not Jeremiah. You understand why? The closer proximity you have with Jesus, the greater your rank in the kingdom. Now, can I unpack it before I wrap it up? Because I had to make a few more points, and I'm going to wrap it up. And we're going to change the entire title of the session. Pray tomorrow when I do another session, we get 300 for the glory of Jesus. Okay. Why was John the Baptist greater than all the Old Testament saints? Why was John the Baptist greater than all the Old Testament saints? Why? You guys should know the answer to this. Because... He's the one who announced Jesus to Israel because of his proximity. He was the one who proclaimed to Israel, here is your Messiah, the Lamb of God. It's because of his proximity to Jesus, he was greater than the rest. All of those who came before him hoped they would be the ones to see Jesus in the flesh and to proclaim to Israel, here, here he is. That honor was given to John the Baptist. Okay? Now, let me prove to you that John the Baptist marks the end of the Old Testament and the start of the New Testament. Can I prove that to you? That he marks the end of the Old Testament and the start of the New Testament. Can I prove that to you? Today's session was a lot of meat, folks. You got a lot of meat in this session today. Luke 16, verse 16. Luke 16, verse 16. Luke 16. The law and the prophets were until John... Jesus is speaking. Old Testament was up to John and ends with him. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. John ends the Old Testament era because now the king of the kingdom is here in the flesh. Now is the proclamation of the kingdom because the king has arrived in the flesh. So the Old Testament ends with John. And because he's the one who now prepares Israel for the king and announces Israel, here's the king. He's the one who sees the king in the flesh, God in the flesh. He, not the others, because of that, he now becomes greater than all of them. But now those who come after the king has come in the flesh and are part of his kingdom are greater than John and greater than the entire Old Testament. Making sense now? Okay, now, but let me now blow you away. I'm going to end it with two points. Two points. John the Baptist's mother was a daughter of Aaron. Luke 1, verse 5. Luke 1, verse 5. Read Luke. His father, Zechariah, was one of the priests who serves in the temple. In fact, it was while he was serving in the temple 
that Gabriel appeared to him and told him, your wife who's old and barren is pregnant, right? And will give birth and you are to call him John. You understand what that makes John? It makes him the high priest because he's from the line of Aaron. He's from the priestly tribe, the priestly line. So here is God's master plan and the wisdom of God in making John the forerunner of Christ, terminating the Old Testament. When John baptized Jesus in water, he was preparing Jesus and consecrating him for his priesthood. So you had a true Aaronic priest consecrating a priest of a different order, of a higher order, of a better order, a greater order than his, preparing him and passing on the baton. He goes, all of us were pointing to you and we're awaiting you to come. And now I pass on the baton. It ends with me and it starts with you. You understand what happened now? You understand what happened? I, John, am the high priest from the line of Aaron. And part of my priestly duty is to bathe you in water so you can be anointed by the Spirit to begin your priestly ministry. And now that I've done that, I decrease, you increase. It ends with me. This era is over. A new era begins. A priest of a better order, a higher order, order, a greater order that makes all of us look obsolete in comparison. Everyone got that? Now let's end it. Is Mary the mother of God? Absolutely. Let's go to Matthew 1, 18 to 23. And we're done. And we're going to change the title. Mods, change the title to Mary, the mother of the mighty God in the flesh. The Mary, Mary, the mother of God in the flesh, or the mother of the mighty God. Now, here, read with me. Matthew 1, 18 to 23. Here you go. Ariel was mentioning this. Yes, Ariel, this proves the title Theotokos is biblical. Let's read. Theotokos is biblical. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother, Mary, was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child, with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily, privately, because he didn't want to expose her to public shame and possible death. But while he thought on these things, folks, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for thou, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now watch here. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, folks, here you go. End of story, end of debate. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin, who's that virgin Mary, shall be with child. Shall bring forth a son. That's Isaiah 9, 6. A child is born, a son is given. Interesting. But here it's quoting Isaiah 7, verse 14. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Folks, you know what the Greek says? The Greek is ha theos. The God of heaven has now come to dwell with us after being conceived and born from a virgin. So wait, Matthew tells you Mary conceived and gave birth to the God. There's a Greek right there, Hathaos, right? The God of heaven, born as a child, born as a babe from her. And you still want to deny the title Theotokos? Met hemon o theos. Met hemon o theos, the God. You still want to deny the title Theotokos, the God-bearer, because Theotokos means God-bearer, the one who bore God in his human nature. It's right there. The virgin, that's Mary, conceived by the Spirit, gives birth to a son, 
They will call Emmanuel because he is the God with us. She gives birth to the God who is with us, who is now a human being. And you still want to convince me? Don't call her Theotokos. It's not biblical. If you're telling me the phrase Theotokos is not in the Bible, sure. But neither is the word Trinity. Neither is the word God-man, Theanthropos. But does that mean I'll stop calling Jesus Theanthropos, God-man? Or stop using the term Trinity just because those terms are not used, even though the Bible teaches those concepts, those doctrines? Then why should I stop calling her the blessed Theotokos? If she's the mother of the mighty God in the flesh, she gives birth to the God who has come to dwell with us as a man. Why should I deny her that title? And she truly is Panagia. The all holy one, because now glorified in the presence of her son, she is all holy and all pure in the presence of her son. And I'm going to give you my opinion. It's my opinion. Okay. My opinion. No, I'm not getting Catholic on you. I'm not getting Orthodox on you. I'm not getting Nestorian. Sorry to use that term. I'm getting biblical on you. I beg the Holy Spirit to give me the grace to be as honest to scripture as possible and to glorify him no matter what the backlash, because I'm going to get backlash. I'm going to get attacked. I'm going to get attacked. Now here. If you ask me, if you ask me, there is great in the kingdom and least. In my view, in my view, definitely the greatest woman that God created is Mary, his, his mother, the mother of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And I wouldn't be surprised she is the greatest human creature. And no one thinks She's otherwise but a human creature. She is a human creature. And in my view, not only is she the greatest woman that God created, but the greatest human creature, simply because she was given an honor that no human being will ever be given, no woman will ever be given. She carried the Almighty God, the eternal love of the Father, the eternal word of the Father, the eternal Son of the Father, the companion of the Holy Spirit, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit. She carried him in her blessed virgin womb, consecrated, made holy by the Holy Spirit, so that he could take a physical body and a human nature from her. How can she not be amazing? Right? And you know, folks, I want you to think about this as I end the session. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Think about it. Jesus had no biological father. Jesus had no biological father. That means his entire genetic material, his entire genetic material came from Mary, not from a man. You know how you're supposed to get 23 chromosomes from your father and 23 chromosomes from your mother? All of Jesus' chromosomes came from a woman. No man was involved. That's why I wouldn't be shocked if when you see Jesus, he was his mother's twin. That he looked exactly like her, but as a man. And that when you saw them, because of she was young, they looked like brother and sister. So let me leave you with this. Yeah, Truth Defenders, I know he's kind of upset because he's a Moriai and he's getting upset. You sound too Catholic, Sam. Sucks being you, S.A. Okay, now, coming back to the issue. I want you to see how amazing Jesus is. I want you to see how amazing Jesus is. As God, pay attention here. As God, as God, Jesus has a father but no mother. Pay attention. As God, Jesus has a father but no mother. Alex, don't ask me how God did it. We know that Jesus did not have any chromosome or genetic material from a man. It was only a woman. How did God do it? I don't know, but he did it. That's all I can tell you. I don't venture to understand how it's done, but we know he did it. Okay, but now, as God, Jesus has a father, but no mother. As man, he has a mother, but no father. Two natures, one person. And in both natures, he only has one parent. In his divine nature... He only has a father, that's God. 
and his human nature, he only has a mother, right? That's Mary. One person, two natures. As God, a father, no mother. As man, a mother, no father. The God man. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We love you, Lord Jesus, beloved son of God. You are the mighty God, born of the blessed virgin. She is your mother who by the spirit conceived your human nature, physical body. So she is the mother of God, the God who became flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. We love you, Lord Jesus. Save us from error. Save us from sin. Save us from pride and arrogance. Save us from being unnecessarily divisive. And save us from compromise to be bold as lines for the truth. And love your truth. Proclaim your truth. Live your truth and die for your truth because you are truth in the flesh, the Father's heart, and the eternal companion of the Spirit. Be with us. Be with our loved ones. Be with my daughters, Lord Jesus, and bless them and love them and bring them to me for your glory. And the work you began in us and me, finish it for your glory, Lord Jesus, to die glorifying you and to never deny you or betray you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God willing, I'll try to see you tomorrow. Lord willing. Lord willing, tomorrow I'm going hiking at 7.30 in the morning. Pray for me. Pray for my daughters that God will bring us together. Pray for my health. I'm going hiking 7.30 in the morning, so I should be back in the afternoon. So I should be live streaming around. Let's shoot for 5, between 5, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 5, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pray for safety because we're going hiking. There are rattlesnakes. So pray for safety. And then I'll join you tomorrow between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Love you guys. Hope this session was a blessing. I hope it was. I really do.